Hello friends, my name is Wesmeralda, you can call me Wes, and welcome to Wonder Wes. Can you believe it? We are mere weeks away from the launch of Battle for Azeroth. Are you feeling prepared? I still need to work on my launch day snacks list. I'm trying to eat better right now, so Red Bull and Doritos are off the table. And let me just tell you, eating right is so much work. All this home cooking and going to the store to buy ingredients and like planning and stuff, it's really like a job. Speaking of jobs, when Battle for Azeroth launches, a whole new slew of profession mats and crafted items will be released for the gathering and making. Now, I could sit here and painstakingly analyze each and every profession and cross-reference against historical market performance and blah blah blah, but what I really want to do right now is talk about all the fun, cool stuff there is to craft. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about the gathering professions, because... Well, while they can be lucrative, especially at the beginning of the expansion, they're kind of boring. No pets that may randomly drop like in some previous expansions. I'm looking at you, Nightshade Sproutling. You never did drop for me from all those disturbed podlings on Draenor, but hey, I guess that's what the auction house is for. Getting back to the gathering professions, there's just nothing fun you can get from them. Unless you just like that zen feeling of going out and harvesting nodes, because I totally get you and we are one in the same. Gathering professions are my jam, and I could literally herb all day if left to my own devices. One cool thing about the gathering professions is that you can potentially make a ton of gold on the auction house from gathering older mats from earlier expansions. See, with the stat squish in patch 8.0, we also took a profession squish, which saw every expansion's professions split out, with levels 1 to 75, or 1 to 100 in more recent expansions, or 1 to 300 overall. For anyone who didn't have their professions maxed to 800 before the patch hit, they received some sort of incomplete distribution of levels. And the completionists out there may want to go back to Burning Crusade, for example, and will need mats to get their blacksmithing maxed for that expansion. That means they'll need ore. Ore that you miners out there can provide and sell on the AH for hugely inflated prices. And you'll be laughing all the way to your 5 million gold Brutosaur mount. Now, for the crafting professions, let's just go alphabetically here so that I'm not playing any favorites. We're gonna start with alchemy, which is actually my favorite. Sorry for the lies. Alchemy, of course, will make all those sick flasks and pre-potting potions you can carry, including the sea mist potion, which gives you slow fall and water levitation for a whole minute. And alchemists can transmute anything into almost anything else. Probably the most used transmute will be to expulse them, which is sort of like Legion's Obliterum. But alchemists can also transmute my favorite, Battle Pets. Yes, this expansion we once again get our Meat to Pet transmute, which after seven days of gestating in a quivering sack, will yield one of a few different pets that you totally want, and potentially some older pets that you totally don't want. Included in the new pets are the Baby Krog, Slippy the Adorable Octopus, the Blood Feaster Larva, which may be renamed because there's two of them in the Beta Pet Journal, and the Gear Spring Hopper, which to me actually seems more like it should be an engineering pet, but that's the way it is right now in the Beta, so I don't know. That's four new pets with Alchemy, and I am so here for it. Let's move on to Blacksmithing, and keep moving on because there's nothing super cool about Blacksmithing. Okay, maybe that's being a little harsh. You're going to be able to make the usual assortment of plate gear and weaponry, and also you'll be able to make a skeleton key, which opens up lockboxes, hoof plates, which allow your mounted speed to be increased for two hours at a time, and stirrups, which allow you to interact with stuff while mounted for two hours. These last two can be great when combined with gathering professions. Oh, and if you're a blacksmith using the stirrups or hoof plates, well, your time is extended up to eight whole hours. That's pretty cool, I guess. Now to enchanting. Along with your regular assortment of enchants, including stat boost weapon enchants and profession perk glove enchants, you'll also be able to craft bracer enchants, which affect your hearthstone. You have cooled hearthing, which reduces your hearthstone's cooldown by 5 minutes, safe hearthing, which creates an absorb shield around you while casting your hearthstone, and swift hearthing, which reduces the cast time of your hearthstone ability. I think the cooled hearthing is the coolest. <laughs> And let us not forget the coolest enchanting item of them all, the Enchanted Tiki Mask Pet. In my opinion, that's the best thing about enchanting. Everything else is useful, but pets are always the most fun. Next up, we have Engineering, and there's a few items engineers can make that caught my eye. 
First off, we have the real reason people take engineering, the mounts. BFA doesn't disappoint, adding the Mecha Mogul Mark II mount, which kind of looks like a goblin remade Mimron's head. Engineers can also craft and wear a variety of fine goggles. My favorite is the AZ3R1T3 orthogonal optics, which just looks super sweet and make me wish my warrior was an engineer. The other engineering item that caught my eye, but does not, I repeat, does not look like fun, is the electroshock mount motivator, which is used to make your poor mount go faster and stacks up to five times. But the poor mount is likely to go into a frenetic daze if you use it too much. I say using it once is too much. Somebody call PETA. Inscription has some interesting new items that it can craft, including contracts that yield reputation gains, some cool looking though perhaps slightly goth offhands including the etched vessel and the vessel of mysticism, and the glyphs of the dolphin and tide skipper, which, as a druid, transform your aquatic form into one of two majestic dolphin models. I mean, what could be cooler than a dolphin? Jewel crafting is up next. And honestly, apart from the gold making opportunities that jewel crafting yields each expansion, there's not much here. There is the insightful rubelite gem, which grants 5% extra experience while you're leveling. But for reals, how many of us will be seeing socketed gear in those first days it'll take to level? So my jewel crafter friends, go hang out in front of the AH and get that sweet gold, cause there's nothing else for you to do. Leatherworking has a few cool items. You can craft the coarse leather barding, which prevents you from being dazed on a mount, and you can also craft some diving gear, the shimmer scale diving helmet and the shimmer scale diving suit. Now, I haven't seen the models for when these items are used, but I imagine them to be pretty awesome. From a use standpoint, I don't see these getting much use except for looks. Let's switch over to our last primary profession, tailoring. Now, apart from bags and the occasional cool transmog item or mount, tailoring doesn't usually offer anything fun. With the one exception of the Elec plushie, because that's just about the fluffiest, cuddliest, and stuffiest pet in the entire game. At launch, tailoring won't have any pets or mounts or really anything fun at all, but they will have bandages. Yes, first aid is gone, and now the tailor's union is taking over the production line because we all use so many bandages. Other than that, tailors can make battle flags, which are usable items that buff the user and every member of their party within 15 yards. There's rallying swiftness, which increases everyone's mount speed. Phalanx defense, which decreases the damage everyone takes by 15% and kind of sounds like phallic now that I think of it. And spirit of freedom, which decreases the time CC effects last. The problem with these is that they aren't usable in raids, dungeons, raided battlegrounds, or arenas. So like, they're for questing or maybe non-raided battlegrounds? I just don't see these being used a lot, but I definitely could be wrong. One item type I hadn't mentioned but that nearly every profession can craft is follower equipment. These are items that can be socketed into your mission table followers, who will then bring back items that will be useful to you in your profession. For example, Leather workers can craft the Tempest Hide Pouch, which gives your followers a chance to bring back hides and skins from their missions. And alchemists can craft the Potion of Herb Tracking, which allows the chance for followers to bring back herbs from their successful missions. I imagine these will be a great passive way for crafters to get those extra mats they will need throughout the expansion. That's it for all the fun stuff you can get through the primary professions. I've left the secondary professions off this video because I didn't want it to be like 8,000 hours long, but let me know if that's a video you'd like to see. Also, what profession items are you looking forward to the most? If you're not sure what all is available, Wowhead has a great guide which I'll link to in the description below. That's it for now. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to share this video with your wow loving friends. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do it. It's easy and free and you'll inch me ever closer to my first goal of 100 subscribers. And big thanks to everyone who's already subbed. You guys and gals are the best. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.